Hello, fermentation station, can I help you? Can you help me make sourdough? Yes, let's make some bread. Hey friends, I hope you're all doing well, hanging in there. I wanna to talk to you today about something that is perfect for self-quarantine, making sourdough bread. Now, hear me out because I was super intimidated by making sourdough as well. About a year ago, something clicked. And now I am a woman possessed, I can't get enough, and it really is the perfect thing to do in self-isolation or quarantine or whatever the right terminology is because it's not that much work, <laughs> believe it or not. It's just a lot of tending to. As with all things fermentation, it takes time. So you have to do a little bit of this, let it sit for three hours. A little bit of that, let it sit for six, 10, 15 hours. I'm gonna show you the super basics so that you can do it at home. You can take this recipe and add in other ingredients. Isn't it amazing that with just water and flour, you can make a beautiful, sustaining, satisfying loaf of bread. So to start, you will need a sourdough starter. So the starter contains the yeast that is needed to make your bread rise. If you know anyone who makes sourdough, they will happily hand over some starter to you because a part of it is discarding some starter every day in just like 10 minutes, I'm about to go hand off some starter. How do you feel about trying to bake sourdough? It's a whole new world, so much to remember. Weights, temperatures, I'm overwhelmed. I think that's a, like another first world problem, but I'm grateful, it's something to do. You got it's this, Dina. Fun. You're such an awesome Thank cook you, to do Katie. this. Okay, let's do another elbow bump. Bam, <laughs> have fun. To create a sourdough starter from scratch, you need flour, water, and time. So every day for a week, mix equal parts flour and water. Mix well. Cover and let it sit on the counter. Then the next day, stir in more flour and water. And then over about a week, then you'll have your starter and those magic microbes work their way in there. It becomes a bubbling, gurgling goo monster. And then you can start making sourdough bread. All right, so you've got your starter. Now I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step of how to make a sourdough loaf. Now I'm not gonna get into the crazy specifics or the science of it or any of the like really nitty gritty stuff. For all that, you can buy my book coming out spring of 2021. No, but seriously, you can, but that's a long way from now. There are so many incredible bread resources online and in books and things that you can, I'm sure, access from the safety of your own home. I'll put a list of some of my favorite resources in the description box below. But for now, I, I really think that you just need to start. That's how I learn best anyway, is just by doing. I believe in you. Just like a typical QKD recipe video where it's bam, 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 I walk you through the steps of the recipe. This is gonna be pretty bam, bam, bam too. So buckle your seatbelt and let's go. In the morning, pretty much as soon as you wake, mix the starter for this loaf. So you'll take some of the starter you've already got and you'll take 25 grams out of it to combine with 25 grams of white bread flour, 25 grams of whole grain flour, and 45 grams of slightly warmer than room temperature water. And you wanna mix this really well. Cover it and then keep it in a warm area of your kitchen for about six hours. You'll see it grow, it'll get all bubbly, and it'll smell kind of pleasantly acidic. But three hours after you've refreshed your starter, it's time to do the auto lees. So this is just where you mix flour and water together. To do this, combine 450 grams of white bread flour, 50 grams of whole wheat flour, and 400 grams of water. Mix it all together until there's no dry flour left, and then let it sit for three hours. Okay, so now time has passed, your auto lease is ready, and your refreshed starter is ripe. So now pour 75 grams of your ripe starter and 10 grams of salt in with the auto lease mixture. Working your way around, Lift the edges up and over, folding it in on the center of the dough. This will combine everything. And then once it's combined, kind of just mix it and like you'll get a little slap in there. Just get it all mixed in together. Cover with a clean kitchen towel and leave it on your counter. And then let that sit for 30 minutes. I keep a bread journal to note down the times and any other specifics. 
Now is when you'll start a series of stretch and fold turns in the bowl. So at your 12 o'clock, lift the edge up and stretch it, but don't let it break. And then just when you think it's stretched to pretty much its furthest, you'll fold it over. Rotate the bowl a quarter of a way, do that again. Do this four times in total. So hitting north, south, east, and west of your dough. Cover with a kitchen towel, leave it on your counter, and revisit it in another 30 minutes. You're gonna do the same thing, same stretch and fold routine, north, south, east, west, bam. Cover with a kitchen towel, leave it for another 30 minutes. And then a third time, number three, third time's a charm. You're gonna do the same, stretch and fold, and then when you're done with that, cover it with a kitchen towel and let it sit for three hours on your counter. This is called bulk fermentation. Thinking ahead to the next step, I use rice flour to dust my banneton liner. If you don't have a banneton, no big deal. Just put a clean kitchen towel over a bowl, heavily dust that with rice flour so that the dough doesn't stick. Now it's time to pre-shape. Sprinkle some flour on your countertop to then tip the dough onto. Be gentle with the dough. Try not to cajole out any of the air that is built up in there. With floured hands, cup the dough and spin it around, kind of like you're polishing a punch bowl or something. Use your other hand with a bench scraper and you want it just so it resembles a round circle. Let this rest on the countertop for at least 20 minutes. Okay, now we're gonna shape. So looking at the ball of dough, you wanna stretch the left side out and back on the center of the dough. Do the same thing on the right side of the dough, folding the dough over the flap you've just placed. Okay, now stretch the dough up and over from the top, the north side, and then when you pull it down, bring it under the dough itself so that that smooth side that was facing the counter is now face up. Using both palms, kind of cupping the dough, spin it while you're gently pulling down on the countertop. So you wanna create a taut skin on the top portion of dough. And then place it with that nicely taut side face down, pinch the bottom together so that it stays nice and taut. Cover with a clean kitchen towel, tucking the long ends under the bottom of the bowl and put it in the fridge for 15 hours. I do this part overnight. All right, the next morning, it's just the easy stuff. Now you just have to bake it. So one hour before you bake it, heat the oven to 250 degrees Celsius, or that's 485 degrees Fahrenheit, and put your baking vessel in the oven to preheat. I use this Le Creuset kind of squat Dutch oven. It works like a charm. After that hour has elapsed, you're gonna take a rimless baking sheet and put parchment paper on it. Invert it over the bowl with your proof dough, and then flip the bowl, gently transferring the dough from its banneton or bowl onto the parchment paper. Using a razor blade or a really sharp knife, you're gonna score the top of the dough with several confident, swift cuts. Now working quickly and taking care not to burn yourself, remove the heated baking vessel from the oven. Lifting the parchment paper, put the dough on its parchment paper into the Dutch oven. Put the lid on it and in the oven for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, turn the heat down to 430 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. Remove the lid and continue baking for another 15 minutes without a lid. When that time's up, carefully remove the pot from the oven and move the baked loaf to a cooling rack. Congratulations, you did it. You made a sourdough bowl. You should be very proud. And this is just a basic. And you can add fun mix-ins to this. You can experiment in countless ways. Black olives and thyme is a favorite. Ooh, and walnut and raisin. I need nothing else in this life. Nothing, nothing. Self-isolation, bring it on. So I hope this video gives you the confidence, the courage, the wherewithal to try making sourdough at home because you guys, you can do it. Trust me, if I can do it, you can do it too. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it has inspired you to make sourdough at home and stay safe, everyone. I'm thinking of you all. We can get through this. We're gonna get through it. All right, bye. Don't forget to keep it quirky. See you soon.